If your department can establish that it is done illegally, then the bank could institute proceedings to recover the bulk of his holdings. I think it's time Mr. Goldfinger and I met. Socially, of course. I uh, was hoping you'd say that. It might lead to a business talk, Mr. Goldfinger's kind of business. I need some sort of bait. I quite agree. This is the only one we have from the Nazi horde at the bottom of Lake Toplitz in the Seltz Kammergut. But there are undoubtedly others. Mr. Bond can make whatever use of it he thinks fit. Providing he returns it, of course, it's uh, worth £5,000. Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Mystery Vault podcast. I'm your host RJ McCready and for this episode I thought we'd go on a treasure hunt because I think uh, lost treasure around the globe deserves its place in the Mystery Vault um, because it does create a lot of like speculation and it does create a lot of mystery and people spend their lives looking for these lost treasures such as the lost city of El Dorado uh, you've got lost pirate treasure. I think it's a treasure of Captain Kidd, uh, Blackbeard's uh, lost ship, which I find fascinating myself. I think it's a great subject. I think it creates a little bit of hocus pocus itself. Um, there's a little bit of a romantic thing about it. The thought of finding lost treasure out there. Um, it's also been Hollywood fired um, in films such as The Goonies, The Monuments Men. Kelly's Heroes, uh, also Indiana Jones, let's not forget about Indiana Jones, which uh, ties into today's episode where he's looking for the Ark of the Covenant before the Nazis get hold of it, and that kind of draws into what I'm going to be talking about today, and it's going to be uh, Lost Nazi Gold, and the reason why I picked this um, one today is because it kind of has, when I looked at it, it, it's created a bit of a mystery, a little bit of a draw, something that's very similar to the reason why people go to Loch Ness, uh, because they believe there's a, a monster in the lake and they might capture a photograph of it. Um, but with this one, people are interested because they think that there is some gold at the bottom of a lake in Austria. And let's give you a little bit of a synopsis on that. So this lake in Austria is called Lake Toplitz. Um, it even has a great name to where it's situated in, in the mountains. It's actually situated in what they call the Dead Mountains. Uh, it's about 40 miles southeast of the city of Salzburg. Uh, Salzburg, just to give you a little rundown, that's where Mozart was born. It's where they filmed uh, The Sound of Music. Uh, it's also where Hitler had his eagle nest in this area as well. And for anybody who's unfamiliar with the eagle nest, um, I'm sure most of you are, but it's actually uh, Hitler's fortified chateau. Uh, it's where he did some planning pre preparation for the war. He also had a wine cellar up there which contained Vat 66 and this uh, eagle's nest was actually taken back by the Allies, by famously by the 101st Air Born, which was portrayed in one of my favourite TV shows, which was uh, Band of Brothers, and they treat themselves to a little bit of that Fat 66 along the way. But going back to the uh, lake, so the lake itself is, again, like I say, it's situated high up in the mountains. Um, it's about 2,500 feet above sea level. It's in a gorge which was created by the Ice Age, and it's about 1,300 feet in length and the actual depth of the lake is 300 foot. But the, the mysterious thing about this lake itself is the, the way it's kind of like laid out where you've, you've only got like a depth of about 20 meters which contains fresh water and the rest of the lake is dense, salty um, water that contains no oxygen at all. And you can only really go down 20 meters as well because um, any more than that, you come across a dam which is covered by logs. Logs. So where the where logs of or bits of timber and rubbish and all that have fallen into the water, they only go about 20 20 meters deep, and then it creates this wall, which is something that makes it difficult for divers to go down and see if they can try and find any sort of treasure at the bottom of this lake plus the fact there's no oxygen so it makes it a very dangerous place to dive some divers say it's probably one of the most dangerous divers dives to go in or lakes to go into 
Um, the other thing is, which I looked into as well, is the part of the lake at that depth where it's so salty and there's no oxygen. There is actually, um, they have actually found worms down there that live without oxygen, which is kind of mysterious itself uh, when you look into that. It's almost stuff you can make horror movies out of. I've seen enough of those where they find stuff. But um, I'm not here to talk about movies to the game. That's my other show. <laughs> but um, yeah, going back to this lake. So yes, it is a difficult place to go diving. Um, but then it's probably at the same time the ideal place to stash stuff into the lake. Which you don't want anybody else to find. Which ties into... Uh, what I'm going to talk about today is the actual Nazis putting stuff into this lake on a retreat back in 1945 which i'm going to go into now so as always guys um if you've listened to my show enough always turn back the time to create a building block and tell you how we got to uh the mystery of thinking that there is gold in this lake so let's go back to 1945 in europe um you've got the you've had the nazi occupation um of europe and the allies at this time are closing in on Berlin and Hitler and his army are on the run and they are now a tired army and they basically want to get rid of everything including uh, the the nasty things that they have been up to during the war. Um, So they retreat to Austria and it's a region that they've called the Alpine Fortress and Patton's army was ordered to advance, so they were closing in on them. And basically what, what happened at this time is the Allies actually surrounded Austria, knowing that Hitler's army were in this location. And it was surrounded by the Allies, the Americans, the British and the Russians. And I think now looking into this like historically and the re- little bit of research I've done is that the Nazis always knew that they were going to use this place as a redoubt, as a place to retreat to. Uh, they actually called it the Osea land in Austria. And the reason why they chose this location is because it's it's mountains, there's good places to hide, it's got caves. Uh, it's also a difficult la- location to try and get into, to try and track um, whoever you're trying to follow into this land. Also a good hiding place. And it also contained Lake Toplitz, um, which I've just spoken about. Um, so the high up generals they retreat to the lake and the allies are only like 50 kilometers away from the the nazis so they're closing in very fast and i suppose in desperation um what as i mentioned one of the one of the big things that they the the nazis wanted to do was try and get rid of their incriminating evidence that could be used against them for what they got up to during the war and a lot of eyewitnesses after this event have said that not only were they getting rid of this evidence, but they also got rid of 40 crates containing something which they dropped into the lake. And they spent the whole night dropping crates into Lake Toplitz. I've actually got a date for this event. It was on May 6th, 1945. And... This lake was actually used um, by the Nazis as a naval testing site and some people say that it was actually used um, for the Nazi wonder weapons, whatever that is. And there is a lot of stuff about um, them using, like obviously they created like the V1 bomb, they were very heavily advanced in science, Uh, they were making these weapons. So there's probably... Let's put it out there, it's it's probably very plausible that they were getting rid of this evidence as well, some of their um, secret uh, Nazi weapons. Um, But what they were doing, they are using it as a uh, naval test site as well, so they were using it for advanced naval weapons such as underwater rockets and the improvement on torpedoes for the Navy. But going back to the disposal... Some people believe that they weren't weren't only just disposing evidence for their war crimes, they also believed that they were disposing gold. Now, what brings a little bit of plausibility to this is the actual fact that that gold was found by the the Allies. Uh, The Americans, there are some cases which uh, make this a fact that gold was found. Uh, Some of the cases here, uh, some of the famous cases are... Uh, in Worthen, the Americans found uh, a 
Hungarian gold train, um, which was a lot of gold which was uh, stolen by the Jews during the war. Uh, also, very famously, in one of the salt mines of Merkis, um, they found a whole ton of gold and cash. And in Matsi, they also found a holy crown of the of the Hungarians. Uh, so, like again, that sort of ties in with the uh, you know the you know Indiana Jones because you know Raiders of the Lost Ark. There is a little bit of truth behind that where um, Hitler was looking for all these old relics. Um, so yeah, along the way, the Allies were finding these relics, but a lot of stuff unfortunately also got destroyed, uh, which kind of like brings a little bit of speculation here because um, what you have in this case is you actually have eyewitnesses. Um, some accounts, people seeing, you know, the, the generals, high up generals dis disposing of crates into this lake. And I suppose with, with the high up hierarchy in this location as well, it would make you think that they might possibly have something like that on them that they want to quickly get rid of. And I suppose in this case, with the Allies closing in, you know, they're only 50 kilometers away. Um, there's a good chance that they, they want to get rid of this stuff and perhaps maybe want to go back to it after the Allied invasion. Which in most cases, what I know about treasures is um, throughout the history, um, you, with like the Romans and the Saxons, you've had, like, let's just use uh, England as a um, example. Uh, when Whenever someone's been invaded in history they bury treasures into the ground wanting to go back to go and get them at a later time but because obviously you've got the invasion and you've got another invasion here by the allies uh, this is where this the, these gold and these these treasures get lost and so the Nazis have dumped all this into a lake whatever it may be and then they fled and then they've disappeared and so what's happened here now is that what you're left with after this event on this night is eyewitness accounts. So what's happened here is people have witnessed crates going, in, going into the water. The Americans have turned up and then they've got these, these accounts. And I suppose you tie in with what, what they have found uh, during the Allied invasion with the gold is that there could possibly be something that has been dumped into a lake because you know it, it's very plausible and so the war's over um, the Nazi occupation has come to an end but because of the eyewitness accounts and the crates that have been dropped into the lake it has now sparked a or is now the birth of a legend of the you know, locals thinking that there is gold at the bottom of this lake. And it's also created just a little... It, it apparently sparked a little bit of hope for people as well, thinking that there was um, something at the bottom of this lake, and we might be able to find it. And it's created a bit of hocus-pocus, and people would visit the lake. And from here onwards, you would have now people searching for this treasure. So over the years, um, divers have come to the lake... And they have found Nazi guns, munitions, uh, bottles of wine have been found on the shore. Um, very famously, in 1959, some divers managed to get to the bottom of the lake somehow. And they brought up a crate. And you, you can probably imagine at this time, they're probably thinking, we found something. We found a crate. And they open it up. And now this kind of brings a little bit of light to uh, this case where they found... Millions of pounds of uh, British currency in notes. I think it's um, a total of something ridiculous like 5.8 billion in British currency. And this was actually an operation. It's a legit operation by the Nazis. It was called Operation Bernard, which is kind of interesting itself because what they wanted to do was that the they were trying to take over... Uh, Britain and they, were, they knew that that was going to be a thorn in their side and Britain at this time was already suffering with economy because of the war but what they wanted to do was like parachute these notes into Britain and try and destroy the economy with these legit or counterfeit um, not legit but these counterfeit notes 
Um, but these were dumped into the lake, so there was something there. And then in 1959, another diver called Gerhard Zuna, he he went to the, he managed to get through the the dam somehow, and he claims that he found a sunken aircraft at the bottom of the lake, which is pretty cool. Not quite sure how it got there, but he claims that. Um, uh, unfortunately, over the years, though, it has claimed the lives of five divers. So, as I said at the beginning of the show, this is a very dangerous lake. You know, you 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 think. You know, when I first looked into this, I thought it's a lake, so it'd probably be quite a quite a safe place to be, you would think initially. But because of the way it's all laid out, with you know so much oxygen and that log dam, it it it's a lake which is holding back on its secrets. It's not going to let you um, reveal what's down there. Which again, I, I suppose each time someone goes to this lake and dives. Um, and they're finding, you know, guns and ammunitions and wine bottles and the crates which I've just mentioned, which were involved with Operation Bernard. I suppose it would create that thing in your mind where you're thinking, well, we're finding this. We must be getting very close now. And the other thing that the divers are battling against as well is the authorities, because the Austrian authorities do put... Um, some sanctions on diving in, into this lake and apparently each year tourists turn up and divers do turn up illegally and they go into the lake and I think they arrest about 10 people uh, each year for illegally diving into this lake so and I suppose all the time that there is that speculation and there's that mystery uh, people are going to be a little bit fascinated and it has also created a, uh, a tourist in industry and the Austrians actually call this their Loch Ness, which is interesting. So people get it into their minds that there's something into this lake. And this is what I've mentioned before in, in the mystery world. Um, and this is why I thought it's, it's worth talking about this subject today, not only because it's treasure, because that's something I'm interested in. And it's something that I will um, come back to in other shows, as I mentioned with um, El Dorado and pirate treasure like that. I think it's really great. I think it's you know it's, it's a it's a great addition to the mystery world. Um, but it's it has created a little bit of hocus pocus. Um, I don't necessarily think there is actually anything wrong with that. I think it's uh, it's it's quite good to have things like this. But at, at the same time, what I would say is that there is also unfortunately with with this story it also holds a very horrible tale to actually where this gold was taken from um, during the war so it's 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 also and you kind of hear this as well um, I, I would almost say that this would actually be like a cursed type of treasure as well if you was to find it so with where this treasure came from you know it's it's it's, it's you know, treasures from the Jews, you know, with the, the horrible war crimes that happened during World War Two. I suppose what you could say is that should this gold really be found, should it just be left in this lake? Um, but if there's something that, on on the flip side of that coin, something that good has come out of this, some people, you know, especially like the tourist industry, people like to go there and they have this kind of fascination, and it's creating some some good in in a way. But then, unfortunately, uh, like I say, uh, along the way, some people have also lost their lives. Um, but the most recent uh, case here I've had a look at was in. 2005 where the Austrian state uh, signed a three-year agreement with uh, Global Explorations which is an American company uh, founded by a treasure hunter called Norman Scott. Um, so they spent some time on this lake and they used some high-tech equipment. I think they used some um, uh, like mini subs. Uh, they did like a radar of the lake and apparently so they say they didn't find anything, which, again, <laughs> uh, you, you can make your own mind up about that because this kind of leads on to the next um, thing with this case, just in my mind, is that if the Austrian state have got you know, a global exploration company to, 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 to search the lake, I guess if you do find the gold, so you do find it, then what happens there? You know, I suppose it is a little bit sort of a 
controversial thing. You know, we found a load of Nazi gold and who do we give it to? Who, who takes ownership of it? So, um, you know, if it does turn up, I'm sure it would hit the headlines and um, there'd be a big debate about it. And uh, I imagine it will probably be quite controversial itself. Um, but yeah, we'll have to wait and see. But at this time, uh, like all these treasures, and I've seen it quite a bit, uh, where people have spent their lives looking for these treasures and it, I suppose it is that power of that sort of what if and it's always that thing that what what draws us back and why do we keep pursuing it it's like um, you know as I mentioned at the beginning of the show you've got the lost city of El Dorado uh, you've got lost pirate treasures there's an awful lot of TV shows out there at the moment of people searching for gold one of them is the um the curse of oak island i mean i do watch these shows because it's something i'm interested in um but the guys on oak island they spend years looking for it and they're still convinced that something there so it's again it's that as i said before you know i'm going to mention this i've mentioned it before i'm going to mention it again it, it, it's always that is the core power of the mystery world which i find fascinating that's why i'm here talking about it is as soon as someone has something in their mind and they think there's you know is there, is there a monster in the lake is there gold there um we, we just keep getting drawn back into it you know whether it's like that sort of curiosity um but again you know as, as i said you know if it if it creates a little bit of hocus pocus and people go to the lake and i know unfortunately you know the, the unfortunate thing in this case is that die, it is a dangerous lake. Um, so unfortunately, people have died. And I suppose that is the other thing. It's like, what are people prepared to do to try and find these treasures? And unfortunately, um, some of these people, even though they know that uh, the lake is dangerous, it's that power of, you know, I want to find out, even if it, you know, sometimes costs my life. You know, it, it, it's, it's an amazing, it, it's a fascinating thing. Um so that's what I thought I'd talk about this one today. So it's a little bit of a shorter episode to what I usually do, but I've covered everything with this case. Um, and like I say, the end result is we're still left wondering. But um, at the same time, as a, as a conclusion, there is, for me, um, I would say there's a big plausibility here um, with this, with the fact that, you know, other gold and relics and things like that have been found by the allies so i would probably put this one down as a as a plausible case it's just the fact that the the way the lake is set up um it, it's going to be a difficult one for people to try and solve so in the meantime it will just be another part of the treasure mysteries in the world so uh, there you go guys um hope hope you enjoyed that um I'm going to bring the show to a close now, so as always, I'll just do a little bit of admin. I am a proud member of the Legion Podcast Network, so go and check out all the other shows on there, including my other show, which is the Bite Size Cinema Podcast, where I do movie reviews. Um, you can also find uh, the Mystery Vault Podcast on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube and several other players if you put in the, the Mystery Vault podcast onto Google it will lead you to somewhere where you can listen to the show um, I've also got a Facebook page where I'm most active so if there's anything you want to put on there any suggestions and anything else you'd like me to cover and talking about that my next show I'm going to be going back to something that's a little bit more familiar in the world something that I would say we all know about but I'm going to have a look into it and what that's all about and that is the Crystal Skull um so i will have a look into that so that'll be the next episode to uh, look out for so there you go guys um as always keep it mysterious keep it safe and i'll see you soon this show then make sure you check out the other great shows on the legion podcast network like cinema psyops cinema beef devour the podcast duncan and Bo come correct exploding heads horror movie podcast friday the 13th get slayed the hell mean power hour hello this is the doom show hero hero ghost show 
Kill the Cast, Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space, Jerry Hates Action, Legion After Dark, Mental Health, Obsessive Cinema, Discourse, Pick 6 Movies, The Podcast by the Cemetery, The Podcast on Haunted Hill, The Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shade Cast, Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Which vs. The Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. Horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found.